it's like when people are trying to quit smoking. A lot of people say like, oh, like if they're trying to quit, people are like, oh, you want a cigarette? No, I'm trying to quit, which mm. means I'm trying to be someone I'm not. Yeah. But now if you rearrange that, do you want a cigarette? I no, have quit. I don't. I'm a non-smoker. Yep. Yeah, I have quit. I am. A, no, no, no. I am a non-smoker. True, true. Yeah. Or yeah, I yeah. don't smoke. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the 5,000 Week Journey. I'm here today with my co-host and best friends, Ayrton and Colby. Hey, guys. Good, man. How you doing? What um, was that, bro? <laughs> <laughs> that was my inner beast. Well, what, what awesome. is your spiritual animal? Uh, my spirit animal is probably the gopher. How do you find out what's a spirit? gopher? <laughs> you don't know what a gopher is. What is a gopher? It's like okay. they're kind of like sort of ferrety, sort of not. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Maybe we're, we're moving past this yeah. now. <laughs> Combine a ferret and a weasel, and you get gopher. I don't how know. Do you, how I, do you find a spirit animal? Your spirit animal. Whatever you feel. You I don't know my spirit animal, but my ferret animal is a pig. That's your spirit animal. And you guys, <laughs> you know, that's, spirit spirit know that's your spirit animal. Come on. <laughs> It is my spirit animal. I love the pig. I don't know. How do you find your spiritual animal? I know you brought this up, bro. Well, he's a gopher. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, what's the Should topic for today? No, he's a flamingo. <laughs> no, that's a good point. Flamingo. Yeah, yeah. Normally you wear a flamingo stuff. Flamingo, very, very flamboyant, very, uh, very pronounced, but also kind of awkward and strange. Uh, yeah. I think I indeed am. The I think flamingo. you've worn it for two podcast episodes. So if you go back and watch them, he's worn a uh, flamingo. And it looks great. It matches your hair perfect now. It does. It does. Um, I, 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 mean, I think these flowers do a little bit. They're not quite pink, but probably matches it a little more than it did yeah. before. Before we introduce the topic, what does a flamingo sound like? I don't actually <laughs> know. <laughs> if you had to guess, what would it sound like? Uh, oh, my God. Rah. All right. No, <laughs> we're moving past this. I don't know. It's a bird. Okay. Okay. So, I don't know what a flamingo sounds like. Okay. I've seen a flamingo, but they just kind of stood there silently. Slight, they're actually slightly menacing. So you can't be the flamingo because you can never stand there silently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm learning to be silent. No, I'm just joking, man. Slowly. Yeah. Now it's good. Um, and with that, uh, let's, let's jump into the topic. If you'd like, though, I can just stare at you menacingly for the whole podcast. You could. I could. Um, talking about spirit animals, we are actually on the topic of how your perceived identity shapes who you are. And obviously, you perceive yourself as a flamingo. <laughs> what a smooth lead in. What a smooth lead in. I know. I thought, I thought it was pretty smooth. So. But um, but yeah, yeah. On the topic of like, you are who you think you are, really. So, I think that's a, a very important topic because, yeah, like whoever you think you are is who you're going to be. Well, to break it down to a bit more detail, um, chat because we chat about these topics before we do them. I think Ayrton had some really interesting, very valuable insights on this. So I think I think we should start with you, Ayrton, because you know, as as much as well, it seems obvious. Thanks, you, guys. You, you I, I, I literally looked at both of you leading into this. You're like, yes, let's pass on 10. I do have a ton of stuff to talk about this, I so uh, I'll jump straight into it. Go for it, brother. Um, this, is, this is a really interesting, one, interesting topic talking about identity. And, you know, going into sharing this, I want to I keep it open that, you know, this is a powerful topic that we can talk about. And it's really something that if people want to have massive shifts or changes in their life, potentially what we share on this podcast today can change their life. Because when it comes down to your identity, you know, if you want, say, for example, your, for me, I'll use, I'll always share, share my story. I used to work in a service station. See how I say I used to, that used to be an identity I talk about. That person is a completely different person to the person I'm now, who I'm a successful entrepreneur. And uh, what took me from being that person who was in the working service station to where I'm now was actually back four years ago when I changed my identity. And this is why, I'm, why I want to share it. It's like when I was back in that service station, I realized that I wanted to be successful, wanted to be a business owner, but I didn't have the skills, I didn't have the knowledge just then, but I embodied the identity of the person who I wanted to become. And that was a successful entrepreneur. And just by change, that one change I made four years ago, my last four years have been freaking uh, a lot of hard work and magical and, and, and massive changes and shifts. And a completely different person to what I was back then, but it was an identity change that I changed. And it was one of the most powerful things I did that helped me get to where I'm today. And that's why I think it's a really powerful topic today is like, you know, most people, they say they want to be successful. They say they want to lose weight. They say they want to do this. And at the core of it, it's like you think about an onion, right? At the core of an onion is your identity. And you've got to pull back layers to get to that core to change that identity. 
And this is where beliefs and behaviors and habits all come in. And this is like, you know, when someone says like, uh, I go to the gym, I want to lose, like, I want to lose weight, right? This is like New Year's resolutions. People say, I want to lose weight. Cool. How much weight do you want to lose? And then we go down the land and it's like, oh, you know, I want to lose 10 kilos. Okay, cool. To go down that land, we ask, okay, why do you want to lose 10 kilos? Oh, because, you know, I want to look good for summer. I want to look good for, to get a new girl. Okay, why? Oh, because, you know, I've been struggling in the last couple of years. And then we keep going deeper. Most people stay at the top couple of levels where they're mm. talking about beliefs and they change a couple of habits. They go to the gym five times in a week because like, they're like, yeah, I've got to go five times a week. That's how I get to it. But the thing is, that's not how an identity is changed, right? It's actually by implementing small habits, but setting the big goal of who you want to become. So when people, re- they really should do, and this is health, I'm no health expert, but this is what my... Uh, health coaches has taught me, especially around because I've, I've changed my identity around health. You know, when I look at, I, I set a goal a couple months ago for the next 25 years, who I want to be in my health identity. And it was like, I want to be fitter than I was in my 20s when I'm 50. Mm. Right. And it's an identity thing. And things have started to change, you know, habit wise, which is changing like food, changing my diet, changing the way I exercise, changing the, the people I hang around with because I've changed the identity who I want. I now say I am health. You know, and now, like for example, we're with Blake, um, with his marathon he just run, which is really, really cool to see. He didn't realize he changed his identity from. When well, no, I did realize that. Oh, you did realize. <laughs> yeah. I am a runner. You are a runner now. You now you say you're a runner, and and share your story of of when someone challenged you on that. I want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like the first thing, what's so important is your self talk. Like, you you have to catch yourself saying that. Like, if you do something, you're like, oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm always late. Mm-hmm. Then you're always gonna be late. You're always gonna, be, you know, you're gonna find things to confirm that. Because you identify as a person who is always late. Exactly. You and always um, be late. Yeah, exactly. So you got to like the most important thing is self-talk. But going into it, I'll, I'll share the story. Um, so I, I was in a rut. I was lazy and and I just hadn't been running and I've wanted to be running. So then I set myself the goal. Okay, I did it for YouTube as well. It's on YouTube. Um, I wanted to run a marathon with only 30 days training. And I hadn't run for six months. I think I'd done one or two runs. And then I remember um, I, I had only done like one or two runs. Like this was like within the first week of me starting. And uh, my girlfriend, who didn't mean to like to do this, but I, I basically was saying something and I basically said, oh, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm a runner. And then I continued talking. And she's like, whoa, whoa you've, you've done one run. You're not a runner. And she didn't mean that to put me down. She just to be like, you've only done one run, like you're not a runner yet. Mm. And I'm like, no, I am a runner. Even though I've done one run, I'm identifying myself as a runner. That's who I am. That's what I do. And now I'm at the point where like, I feel weird if I don't go for a run. Now that I've done that 30 days, I've done that marathon. I've already got my next marathon book during 13th. We're doing yeah. that. Yeah, when you So it's all about embodying it. And if someone says that's not who you are, you say, like if it's someone you love, you can say, hey, look, I even sat down and told her, I was like, from now on, if I say that, I, I want you to reaffirm it. Mm. And even if you don't believe it, just don't <clears> say anything. And then from now on, we make the joke. She's like, oh, you are a runner. <laughs> yeah, because you know, when, when, when you identify that thing as a component of who you are, you feel like something is missing when you don't live up to that mm. part of your identity. It's, um, it's, it, it, it's funny, um, you know, when you, when you talked about uh, it and how people, you know, when you identify in certain ways, when you identify by, as someone who does certain things, that it, it, it gives you a push in the right direction. Because I've been listening slash reading to a book at the moment, High Performance Habits, um, which is obviously one that, you, that you've read yourself. And he talks about how one of the main habits that you need is, is clarity. Mm. And in, in every task you do, you need to look at, you know, who am I in this task? Who am I in this arrangement? Why mm. am I doing this thing? And, and it's important to look at who you are in this arrangement because in everything you do, you need an identity of who you are <clears throat> because who you are will tell you as well like why you're doing things. And you answer all these questions just like you said with you know the onions because the onions have layers mm. like, like ogres. Um, onions are like <laughs> ogres are like onions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and when you understand who you are in any given situation, the identity that you want to have, you're gonna want to reaffirm that identity. It's like it's like mm. me when um, you know, because I used to come from a bit, as I've said to you guys before, a bit of a corporate background. Which, um, given the nature of the job, corporate sales and that, um, you you weren't always super honest. 
And, you know, so I sort of went, well, you know, I'm in this job, you know, it's part of my job, I'm, I'm a liar. So I identified as a bit of a liar. So because of that, it's very easy to tell lies in real life as well, by, even by accident, because you just go, who am I? I'm a liar. Mm-hmm. And so I went, you know, especially recently as well with, with some other stuff to, to, to progress with that, but also when I sort of made a big change over the last year, I went, no, 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 I am an honest person. Mm. I, I do not tell lies to people. Mm. I, I, do not, I do not manipulate, I do not trick people. And then and I noticed when I went and, you know, I am an honest person, I was much more honest. My instinctive reaction was the truth. Mm. Instead of going, you know, my instinctive reaction being, ooh, what is the one thing I could say that could benefit me the most in this situation, which is, which is how it used to be, given, given that whole arrangement and everything. But I was like, you know, they asked me a question, what do I react? I just, just react with the truth. So you, when you identify as something, you'll want to live up to the expectation that you put on yourself through that identity. Mm. Yeah. And just quickly on that, I know... You have something you want to say, but just quickly adding to the, what you're saying, like it's like when people are trying to quit smoking, a lot of people say like, oh, like if they're trying to quit, people are like, oh, you want a cigarette? No, I'm trying to quit, which mm. means I'm trying to be someone I'm not. Yeah. But now if you rearrange that, do you want a cigarette? I no, have quit. I don't. I'm a non-smoker. Yep. Yeah. I have quit. I am. A, no, no, no. I am a non-smoker. True, true. Yeah. Or yeah, I yeah. don't smoke. And that's who I am. And that's really powerful. There's a, there's a powerful model. I've been really wanting to jump straight in. Yeah. <laughs> get, get, get before in. we change topic, that's uh, why I in jumped in before you. I want to share this model. With, I didn't come up with this model. This is, it's called the, the be, do, have model. And this, how to be successful in life. This is really about ident- identity. And this is where I'm sharing back to, to my story, how I went from working at a service station to now I'm a successful entrepreneur. And a lot of people have these goals, right? They set the goal of the thing they want to have. So say, for example, the smoker we just shared. Mm. They want to quit smick, uh, smoking. Smoking. Smicky. They want to quit smoking. They want to quit smoking. <laughs> they want to quit smoking, right? They want means they don't have, right? So the, the have is like what the goal they have. Then you go back to who they are, who they are right now. Well, if they don't change who they are to be the person to have the thing they want, then they won't do the actions to get there. So what you need to do is re- re-engineer what you want. So say you want to quit smoking. What does that person look like who is a non-smoker? Mm. And what is he doing? This is where the be do have has. You need to be the person who does the actions of the person who has the thing you want. So if you want to quit smoking, you want to be a non-smoker, that's the outcome. You need to be a non-smoker now and then you'll do the actions of what a non-smoker does. And that's the same with health, the same with business. So say my example, because um, I think it's super relevant, when I was working in the service station, my boss asked me, he's like, he said to me, you're never going to be successful. And I said, I'm going to be, a su- I said, I, I'm a successful entrepreneur because I'm doing, I'm running a business. I said, I was a business owner. He's like, no, you're not a business owner. It's like, you're still working in a service station. I was, but I was working on my business. I was working on the mindset. I was working on the skills, right? And I embodied that. And there was a real identity change. Like I can literally, it was kind of like I changed overnight. I just learned this model. I didn't realize how powerful it was back then, but I had literally changed overnight and like a lot of my friends didn't agree with me. And this is like where it can lead to like, you know, people, they can't accept that new identity change. And this is why this, I said at the start of this podcast, this is a really powerful thing because, you know, you can fuck this up. Oh, yeah. If you say, I'm, I'm a, you know, you can go down the wrong way and, and be the wrong identity. And this is why I really want to touch on is like, you want to choose something you really want to be. So for me, I wanted to be a successful entrepreneur because what does a success, successful entrepreneur do in, in the world? They make, they make a difference. They make a change. They make an impact. So I started to be that person and did the actions to get to where I wanted to be. And I was always that person, that identity. I've evolved since then. But this is the same for anyone like wanting to quit smoking. You have to be the non-smoker today. If you're quitting, you're not trying to quit. You have quit. quit. You don't smoke. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I, it's not like oh, I don't I'm trying smoke. to quit. Like I hear my sister, it's funny that my sister smokes. So I share this and she listens to it and it'd be epic. But she's like, every couple of weeks, she's like, oh, I'm quitting smoking. And it's every couple of weeks she's quitting. Back, yeah, yeah. And I hear it every time. It's the same story I've been hearing for the last six years. I'm quitting smoking. Oh, I'm getting back into the gym. And it's like, I'm back. getting, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting. It's like, it's no, I am at the I gym. I am an athlete. Yeah. I am, I am healthy. And, and I it, am. It, it, and it's, it is simple as just words. And it sounds crazy. We're just like, just changing those words. But that is the process of being. It seemed it like it's something that people who are watching might look at and be like, "Oh, that's it's just words. It doesn't mean much." But like, it's a mindset because it is. Uh, and 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 you as a coach, yeah, and you've coached a lot of people. You know as well. Mindset is so 100%. so powerful. Every every 
every book I ever read, everything I've listened to that's mm-hmm. talked about professional success, none of them don't talk about mindset. They all 100%. talk about you need you need to have the right point of view because I'll bring up an example of um, perhaps good and, and bad identities. Uh, my good one that I'll bring up is similar to Blake's. Blake ran a marathon. I'm going to run this marathon with Blake on the 13th. And I've gone, all right, Got inspired. cool. I am someone who runs marathons. I run marathons. And I go, well, if I run marathons, what are people who run marathons going to do? Well, they need to train. So I guess I'm going to be training every day. And that's what I did. I went, okay, uh, needed to get back into running. So I did a 9K run. I did get, right, okay, well, marathons, what, 42? 42.2. 42.2. I went, okay, well, I need to go up. So every day I've been adding a kilometer to my run without letting it go over an hour. I'm going, well, okay, I guess I better run faster. I guess I better run further. And because I'm saying I am a marathon runner, then naturally I haven't even had to think about it. I've just done all the things that a marathon runner, you know, in my, my opinion would do to train for a marathon, uh, you know. And then as a bad habit, because obviously as I've, as I've said when I was young, I was a bit of a chunky monkey. Um, oh, bit, of, bit of a. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Bit of a. I, I was a very chunky monkey. Um, you know, I had this, this identity that I developed and I was like, oh, I am, you know, very unattractive. And, and I carried that insecurity. I went forth and okay, because I think I'm very unattractive, I do unattractive things, not just, not just you know, in appearance, but in, in personality and the way that you act. Because I have that identity, it, it creates all mm. these different things, all these negative connotations. Obviously, yep. I've gotten over it now and I go, you know what? You know, I, I love me. I'm, I'm an attractive person. And it's not about being like, oh, you know, my head explodes. It's about everyone. Mm. Everyone should think that they are an attractive, beautiful, amazing person. Because they are. Yeah, because they are. And then bec- I mean, then when you do that, when you identify that way, you will treat yourself as you believe a beautiful person ought to be treated because that? that's how you see yourself. One, um, one little exercise I've just started incorporating. And if you've never like done anything like this before, it's, it's going to sound so weird. <laughs> but like I've just been standing, looking at myself in the mirror and just being like, I love you. I love myself. I am worthy. Mm. I am powerful. I am beautiful. Like... Just saying these affirmations. It's so weird. Like sometimes you'll say it and then you'll be like, you, you might not, you don't believe them. But if you did, the, if you do this every single day, I've just started journaling as well again. Mm-hmm. You're just writing, I am worthy. I am beautiful. I am loved. I love myself. Yeah. Then that reaffirms it in your brain. And then eventually it's, you identify, you internalize it. That's who you are. And then your brain looks for outside external factors to support that. Someone does something, you're like, wow, that was really nice of you. I am loved by this person. Yep. And then you start to look for things that confirm it. So it's, it's such a basic exercise. If you don't love yourself right now mm. and if you don't think you're beautiful, you don't think you're worthy, just start this exercise. It, it, it's going to sound ridiculous and going to feel ridiculous. And you won't believe it. Even writing it, you might not believe it. But you keep saying it and embodying it. It's going to change the chemistry in your brain and it's going to become who you are. It's a really... Yep powerful exercise to get into helps to put on some like nice emotional like encouraging music as well obviously um that you know, could work as well we got yeah. we, we got spirit bird by what who's it xavier yeah this is what we're talking about changing beliefs around itself mm. it's like uh as well like the identity is in the, in the core like we go back to the onion <laughs> it's <Ogres>. the core <laughs> but before then it's there's there's values and then there's beliefs and when you start to t- change beliefs and you start to knock them down, mm. you can really start to change that core identity. This is like when, you know, like I said, I shared, I changed overnight. My identity changed, but there were so many beliefs I had to knock down over the last couple of years to get to where I wanted to be. Oh yeah, for sure. There's so many things I had to change. And this is where I share, like when I decided I wanted to be a successful entrepreneur and that was who I was going to become, I, I looked at people who were already where I wanted to be and started studying what they were doing. And this is like, you know, if you're thinking of come becoming like a marathon runner, what did you do, Blake? What did you do in your 30 days of training? Who did you reach out to? Um, I reached out to a nutritionist. I reached out to marathon runners and actually yeah. got advice. So actually and and I bought new shoes yep. and yeah. Actually Their actions did, and did habits that, that a marathon runner does. Mm. Right, and this is the same for like anyone who's like looking to change them. People they will lead back to like the, the gym thing. So people lose weight, they go get a personal trainer. Well, think about it. what does a healthy person do on a daily basis? What are they What are they doing? And they also sit with this is like, do you want to be doing what they're doing on a daily basis? Like, if you look at some people, I mean, I don't macro count or anything like that, but but you think about it, like, if you, do you want to be the healthy person or how healthy do you want to be? Because then you start to you realize how much work it is to put in. And yeah, you want to put in that work to get the result. 
but you want to start to really embody that person and study what people are doing to be where they are. Like mm. ask them, like even for, you know, I'm open for anyone messaging me ever to ask me how to start a business. I fucking, I, I love that. I love it when people, because I know when I first started out, that's the first thing I did. I went and reached out and connect with business owners and asked mm. them, how do you start your business? Because I wanted to be where they were. And that was the being. I wanted to be them. Yeah. Well, not them. I wanted to be the, the successful entrepreneur. And I think what's really important with that is patience. And I'll use the the ship analogy. Like, just it, like if when a big ship wants to change direction, it's very hard to like change that one degree. There's so much effort that goes into it. And this change might just be one degree of change. Mm. But then you think about days, weeks, months. I think sea tank, you sea think, tankers take like hours to turn around. Yeah. Well, not turn around, but just like change a couple of degrees. Yeah, yeah. It takes a while oh, to change. But then you say, if, if you look at it from six months from now, you could have ended up here, but you've actually ended up like over here mm. and you've made this massive change just by making small daily shifts of like, I am this, I am this. It's one degree shifts. Over time, that gap gets longer and longer. And all of a sudden you're someone who, you know, completely new person. So it's I just remember it's it's a lot of patience mm. is is required and just sticking to it day after day and even when you're feeling good that's when we, we feel like oh we've, we're done we don't need to say this to ourselves anymore no when you're feeling good is exactly when you should be pushing harder on the throat 100 percent, 100 percent. it reaffirms it it's 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 the it's the small pebbles that you know come together to start an avalanche and 100 percent, you should always say it when you're feeling good because when we're when we're feeling bad when we're in pain that's when our beliefs are tested i mean obviously we have to stay strong and keep saying it but that's when it's going to be the most difficult to set these things in our mind. When we're feeling good, when we're feeling great, it's it's easier to make that effort to you know change and alter your identity because you're not struggling with crises or you know all these other things that you might be struggling with when you when you're in pain. So you can you know especially when you're having a great day, you go, man, I'm having a great day. You know, I am this and I am that, and I'm loving it. And, and that's exactly what you want to have because then, then you attribute that positiveness to that identity. And so your mind is going to link that identity that you have, who you are, with these positive feelings you're having. And if you're having negative times, it's going to reach for that identity because it remembers that that identity made it feel good. 100%. But yeah, it's, and, and, and one of the things as well to link it to is we all talked about how like I'm trying to quit which basically just means I have temporarily quit and I will soon return to smoking. And it, it comes to the old adage, you know, um, <laughs> I, want it, I want it perhaps. What it's, adage? It's, it's, an old, it's an old adage, but you can also perhaps guess where it's from. It's do or, there, there, you know, do or do not, there is no try. Mm. Yep. What? And it's, uh, it's Yoda, mate. It's Yoda. I, d- I, d- I didn't, I didn't get that person. one. Do or do not. How about, no do, uh, do or do we, not, there is no try. How about we bring a quote that is, uh, relevant. It is, it is <laughs> like, relevant. Say it again. Do or do. Say it again. It's do or do not. There is no try. Either do it or don't. You're not trying to do it. Oh, let's do the Henry. Let's do the Henry Ford great. quote, which is like, I like if you that. think you can Bloody and you Yoda. think you can't, you're right. You're both right. That is also a great one. I like Yoda's Ford. better. <laughs> like Yoda's better. All right, cool. Everybody knows Yoda. Man. I, th- I think, to I this? think Henry, Ford <laughs> Henry Ford copied Yoda. He did. Yeah, he didn't come before <laughs> he, Star Wars started. <laughs> Yeah, he, he he only came like what, like fifty years beforehand. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but, but th- okay. so, yeah, I was gonna say, like, um, I want to share like a really powerful thing we learned, like, um, hmm. which was, so imagine you you are the center of this diagram, right? And mm-hmm. there's two circles, right? Mm-hmm. The outer circle is your true self, your fullest potential true self. You know exactly what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, I remember this. It's great. This is one of my favorite diagrams. The outer circle is your truest potential, right? And you are the person in the middle. And the outside is your true identity. So in the middle, you when you look out, sometimes that inner circle is blocking you. And what that inner circle is, your ego, your limiting beliefs, your I, I'm trying to quit, blah, blah, blah. Because mm, there's two, all, all there's two those circles. There's the outside one. And the exactly. One, yeah. So that inside circle is basically the, th- the shit we tell ourselves, like the bad stuff of like, I'm not good enough. I'm dumb. I'm trying to quit smoking. I don't do that. That's not what I'm meant to be doing. And that's, that's blocking us. It's our illusion self, mm. which is blocking us from seeing our true self. And what we have to do is basically like you said, start embodying, start being who we truly are and actually break through that illusion self 
to then reach our true self, our true potential. And sometimes there's gaps, like in some areas, you straight through the illusion self and you know, yeah, I'm a runner, this is exactly what I'm meant to be. And then it comes to money and it's like, oh, I'm, I'm poor, I'm terrible at handling money. So oh, of course you can be, be illusioned in some handling. areas, but it's 100%, all about, 100%. it's I one of my favorite diagrams. We, we talked about uh, money on another episode, but I wanna, I wanna I share a story. I used to have this belief that I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, break the ceiling of ten thousand dollars a month, and I was shit at re- managing money. Like t- in and uh, end of two thousand nineteen, um, I had done like a hundred thousand dollars in like six to eight months of my coaching business, and I just sold my last video company before that, and I had no money in my bank account. It was all gone. I'd reinvested in coaching stuff, but because I had this belief that I wasn't worthy of money this identity of I wasn't worthy of money and having money, I was, it would go as soon as it came. And I literally uh, had to sit with that and, and, and work through that belief of like, I wasn't worthy. Cause it's growing up as a kid. It's like money was hard to come by. It doesn't grow on trees. All these beliefs, these identity shit that, that was, that was embedded in me as a kid. I had to work through them. When I worked through them, I started to make more money and I started to save more money. I started to, mm. you know, change habits and started, to, I was still working on it. It's a daily, daily principle. There's a book that I share that really helped during that time. It's called the secret of a millionaire mind. doesn't mean you read this book and that's your goal is to become a millionaire, but it teaches you how to change that belief. So this is especially around money, but it changed the identity. And even recently I recommended to a client. She was like, she, she had just jumped on. She launched an offer for one of her, for one of her programs in, in her coaching business. And then she comes, she's like, oh, you know, I, I just don't know if I can make the money. I don't know if they're going to make the sales. She had all this, like this self-doubt come up. And I literally said to her, hey, listen to this book. And listen to this book is going to help you got your identity around money. Because I knew her problem was that she could, she has a great program. She can make the money and the program is worth every penny. She listened to the book. She started to have that belief come back to it, which is self-worth, which is leading to her identity, right? And the same with me. I had this identity back in 2019 that I wasn't worthy of money. That's changed now. I'm freaking worthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, well, you, you, oh, I was gonna you, say, yeah. Like, literally, if you don't have any like support or people around you, like, books is exactly where you get it from. Mm. Like, a, lo- a lot of mindset books really teach that. Like, it's all about, like, even like the power of positive thinking. It's all about not just being like, oh, Mister Positive, nothing ever bad happens. But it's like, no, bad things do happen, but that's okay. But it's, it's just, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is, if you don't have the people around you who can help you with that or like you struggle with embodying it, read books. If it struggles with money, read a money book. If it's about like yourself or it's about, you know, getting into mm. getting into business or whatever, there's so many books out there. You go to your local bookstore, there's a self-help section, start reading books. And even without that, I mean, we've got the glorious wonders of technology and all the Audible. Way. Like, yeah, te- technology enables us to do so many things. I've got Audible. I love Audible because- like people are like, oh, eighteen dollars a month, I might waste it. Well, you get credits every month, so no ma- and the books are like twenty bucks anyway. So no matter what, you never lose any money if you don't use it. But I a great idea I want to share with everyone who's watching that uh, that I got from Blake because I used to listen to music all the time. Okay. And then Blake was like, oh, I was listening to to audiobooks and I run it, and I was like, man. Oh yeah. I've never thought of that. That's an amazing idea. And the funny thing is, it's made it so much easier to run so much further. Like. Before, like if I was listening to music 10Ks, I'd be like, whew, where like it's my second day back into running. I did 10Ks listening to an audiobook and I was like, you know, whatever. Because I'm so, so fixated in what I'm trying to hear that I just let my legs go. Just let my arms go. I'm just, I'm just, my body's just running, but my mind is focusing on all these things I'm hearing and I'm learning and I'm picking them up. Mm. And, you know, it, I go out and I run for an hour. So if an audiobook goes for 10 hours, I'll listen to it in 10 days. And I might go, mm, there's something I missed there. Well, I can listen to it again. It's, it's only going to take 10 days and it's not taking up any time from my routine. Cause I'd be running anyway. Yeah. I'd, I, you know, all I'm doing is just combining two ways of advancing myself into one thing. And then that's about using your time efficiently because you know, that, that way I listen to this and I learn this knowledge. You know, that's, it's been awesome advice. You know, I've been doing it for a couple of days. It makes it so much easier to run and I've learned things. I've learned great things. You know, this, this high performance habits book, it's, it's awesome. But um, yeah, I'm glad it's really helped. One thing I, before we, we, we take off somewhere else, one thing I did want to say is you talked about the, the mirror exercise. Um, now, uh, obviously, you'd, you'd been doing that for a little bit. The first time well, I, I did just it, started doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the first time I ever started doing it was when um, you know, a mutual friend of ours, um, who was 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 very 
very very spiritual knows how to, to you know help people out with a lot of these um personal problems that they have in their mindset which is uh, alex waters who's a friend a friend of ours he was the first person to ever go you know actually introduce me to this exercise of looking in the mirror and actually you know loving what you see in the mirror and i looked i looked at myself and obviously you know you guys know i've had had some troubles before with you know myself and insecurities and i looked at myself and i was like man like you know i i have you know look, look at this guy this guy's been here for me through everything because everything that, that you've done everything and everyone who's watching everything that you have done you have always been there for yourself you have always championed your cause you have always fought for you. So, you know, it's a great exercise. And I, I still do it five minutes every day because I look at it and I go, you know, I come back from my run and I look at it and go, man, I look at myself in the mirror and go, good job, dude. You went for an hour run. You had a shower. You're about to bust into the day. Like, well done, man. And it seems silly, but it makes you, you know, feel so much stronger as a person and so much more more confident. Yeah, with that exercise, um, what was funny – I won't really speak for you. I speak for you. Like you, you had that good experience of like, um, you know, loving, and you're like, oh, I've always been there for myself, because mm. um, we we all did that exercise together. Um, but then I had a completely different experience to you guys. <laughs> I looked in the mirror and I didn't hate myself, but I just it, like you guys went all like positive thinking about the past. I th I went negative thinking about the past, and I was like, man, I've done all these mistakes, things I things I wish I said, things I didn't didn't say, and I got really emotional about it. And it's okay to be like, to almost look in the mirror and, and it's- And be angry. It, it, yeah, yeah, to be angry. It's not it, like, I didn't hate myself. I wasn't looking in the mirror and be like, I, fuck, like, I hate myself. I was just looking in the mirror saying like, this wow, this, this is all my, I've done these mistakes. There's things I didn't say, there's love I didn't give. Um, times I was angry when I, when I shouldn't have been. And it made me like really like just emotional. And then like after I went through that process, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm here now, I can't change the past. I, I feel guilty about it, but I can now make that change and be the person I want to be. Now I want to give more love. Now I want to say the right things and give more appreciation and, and be grateful for the things that I have because you know, mm. I've thought a lot of my family how I don't give enough love mm. and one day they're not going to be there, but there's no point worrying about that while they're here now. So while they're here now, I'm going to give them all the love I can. And that's yeah, and, and you, that's and what's you, really powerful. It's okay to feel bad about it. And you changed your identity. You, know, you said, you know, I am a person who says the things yep. that need to be said. I am a person who gives my family exactly. the love. Because the I, I imagine, and you can tell me if it's a little different, but I imagine the question was like, well, you know, what do I have to do to be a person who doesn't feel this way? Mm. You know, what do I have to do to be a person who doesn't have mm. these these feelings that I dislike? Because... That's not who I am. I am a person who doesn't feel this way. Yeah. So what do I have to do? It was like, that's, that's, it was just like, I've struggled in the past with all these masks up and just being someone who's like, and that's just my, my ego really. And I wanted, I was like, I want to be a different, that person that gives love. And like, but now that that's exactly what I'm embodying. Um, Pushing through the illusion and seeing. Yeah, exactly. It's like, up. well, it's like, like what, like I sort of face, you sort of think about mortality. It's like one day I will never be able to say those things. So while I have it here now, you know, the present, it's called a present because it's a gift that we have right now. Oh, yeah. And while it's still here, give that love. And like I wasn't before, but I am now. Mm. There you go. That's the I am now. <laughs> powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. Um, yeah. So it was a really powerful exercise. You, what, what did you get from that exercise? Oh, you don't have to share if you don't want to because I know it's, it was quite <laughs> um, personal experience. Well, like like I've shared on, on the podcast today, um, I – I used to be lost and confused of how to get out of the job I was in. And I used to hate myself when I was doing it. I I didn't I didn't know how to get out of it. I was dyslexic, I couldn't read, I'd never read a book, I'd never done any of these things that all these successful people do and it took me a long time to really break through some of those beliefs, which is to where I'm now. And when I looked in the mirror, I just had tears of joy of like so proud of myself because I had changed the identity of who I was and became the person I always wanted to be. It was who I am now. And that's like leading with identities. Like it, it took four years. I mean, I'm still like, I'm still growing. I'm still for sure on the journey. I'm, I'm, I'm fully not complete and I never will be. But I looked in the mirror and I was like, fuck, I've come so fucking far. I've done so many cool shit. 
I used to work at a fucking service station and get paid $15 an hour. My boss told me I was never going to be successful. I had no friends supporting me. I had no, my family didn't really support me at the same time. And then when I looked in the mirror, I was just like, wow, you've battled all that. You've come out the other end where you have amazing friends around you. You have amazing circle of people. Thanks, man. Yeah, you guys. Thanks, brother. And, uh, you know, amazing. I have amazing deep connections. I've had great success in business. I'm, I'm seen as an authority. I've come so far. And this all came down to me changing my my identity. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, one thing I want to touch on about identity is how a, lo- a lot of people – let me try and get this out. So people attach a lot of happiness to an identity that doesn't exist. And let me explain what I mean by that. So they're working, like, they're working on their business and they're saying, I'm not going to be happy – until I reach a million dollars. I'm not going to be successful until I do this. I'm not going to be I'm not I'm not going to be happy or I'm not going to be fulfilled until I achieve this goal. And that is external identity, which I'm sure we've all we've all been there before. We're like, mm. I'm not going to be happy until I finish this thing. And like I hate what I'm doing now, but once I get there, that's that's when I'm going to be fulfilled and that that's the end. And that, yeah. that that's it. And it's a terrible but mindset because like, when you get there. Yeah, when you get You're there, just gonna go. I'm not gonna be happy till till I get to the to the next spot. Exactly, because like, the end is your life is death. That is the end. It's a journey. So if you're only if you if you're gonna work so hard to get somewhere, it, you're only gonna be happy for like a day or two, and you're gonna get to that. There's so many, so so many millionaires and people out there who came from poverty, and all they want to do is be rich, be rich, be rich, and they got to that point where they could buy that car and have all this money, and they just felt empty. And thank God some of them, you know, did, did find fulfillment through themselves. But a lot of people just don't enjoy what they're doing and they think that light at the end of the tunnel, that that's the thing that's going to make them happy. Mm. Yeah, I think, and I think one thing to sort of remind everyone who, who's watching is I know we talk about like, oh, you know, we've learned all these things, we've developed all these ways, we've overcome all these things. But as we've said a million times, I'll say again, the journey never finishes. And for none of us, none of us are finished. And... I might be slightly off misremembering it, but there's there's a great quote that I heard recently, um, which is whole, you know, I am whole, perfect and complete, but not yet finished. And in, in every moment, you know, it's like when you say, oh, I'm not successful to get a million. It's like, no, I am successful. I am continuing to become more successful. Exactly. I am a successful person who is growing in success. And you need to believe in yourself. You need to go, you know, I am, I am whole, I am perfect, I am, you know, complete in this moment, but I am not yet finished. Because mm. if you want to be happy, you have to constantly grow because no one feels fulfilled with stagnation. No mm. one feels fulfilled when their life has an advance. Because, you know, think about it. If, 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 you, if you, no matter where you are, no matter how great you're doing, no matter, no matter what's going on, if you went, man, Oh, you know, if I was in the exact same place, you know, one, two, three, four, five years from now, would I feel like I've achieved much? And truthfully, no one would say yes. Even even a high achievers, especially high achievers, would not be happy with being the exact same spot that they are in that given moment one year later. Because we all need to continue growing. And that's why it's important to identify, you know, I am a person who is growing. I am a growing person. I'm a successful person. I'm a happy person. I'm a beautiful person. So identity yep. is just so important. Yeah. Yep. And it's also like you can be realistic. Like a lot of times I catch myself, oh, I don't have any money. And then I'll just chuck on the word yet. Mm. Adding that word makes such a huge difference. If you say, if you just keep saying, I don't have any money or oh, I can't afford it. Like that, then you're telling yourself, I can never afford things. Mm. I, I'll never have money. I can't afford it yet. Just adding that one word makes a huge difference because that's, that's like the negative way of, negative positive way of saying it. Because it's saying like, I can't afford it yet, which means I'm on the journey to, to affording it. Yeah, 100%. So, um, yeah, I think that's really important. Anything yeah. you want to add? You, 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 you look, you look yeah, like you, look like like you want to speak. on your mind. <laughs> We're looking well, at you. Well, lead, leading back to the beats you have model, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. that's Let's go to exactly that. that's basically cool. what we're sharing here is, is for you to have the things you want, you must f- first of all be the person that you want to be now and do mm. the things that that – that person, that future person you want to be is doing and embody the identity of being that person now. Even though you might not be successful, you might not be good at money yet or you might not be 
healthy yet, right? Be the person you want to be now. And that's really important because like, yes, is like the end goal that you're looking forward. But by the time you get there, you're going to be a different person again. Mm. You're going to be evolved. But if you start being the person you want, you want to be in the future that you're wanting to be now, you get to have all the characteristics, the, the, the awesome shit that that person has. It might be fucking hard to change straight away. But you get to be that person and then you get to enjoy the journey to when you up level to that next identity that you want to be. Yeah. And you got to find a way to enjoy the process. Like mm. if, if you're unhappy with the process, then you got to make a change. Maybe that's just not the right thing for you. And yeah, like, like you said, like life is simply a journey. And if you're not enjoying some parts, obviously we can't be happy 24 seven. Like that's just not realistic. And, but, it, but if a huge part of your life, like if you don't like your nine to five, then make a change. Mm. Maybe you can't straight away, but taking small steps over a long period of time can really, you know, it's like that ship. You change one degrees, it yeah. feels like nothing, but over a year, it's yeah. going to be massive. And it's and it's not, um, as some people who might be a little sceptical, it's not psych- psychological pseudoscience. It's not, uh, you know, identify someone who's happy and bam, immediately all your problems in your life go away. It's, it's not about that. We're not saying it's magic. What happens though is when you identify as someone who is or who feels a certain way, like I said with the marathon, you will, sorry, marathon, you will naturally shift your life to be the person that you believe you are. Yeah, and, and you know that's why it's that's why it's you know so powerful identity. Yeah, exactly. And just before you wrap up, I think a really good t- key takeaway or exercise to do is to you know over the next day or two identify what you say to yourself. If you start, if you, like I noticed a lot when I was more aware, I was saying I'm always late to things or I can't afford things, and also incorporating. So it, firstly, catch yourself saying those things so you can eliminate or change it. And the next thing is try the mirror exercise. It's very confronting it's embarrassing but like it's you by yourself so you can't be embarrassed when you're by yourself if people laugh just at look it, in the mirror that, that's because it is so confronting yeah just go by yourself just start saying just make make i sometimes make a joke at it i just laugh i'm like yeah i love you man like you're so worthy <laughs> like, you just be silly but no like you're in a bathroom by yourself like no one is ever gonna know so it's okay so i reckon firstly start identifying your self-talk of what you say to yourself and next just try saying some great things about yourself. And that's just something you can implement right now to make the change. 100%. So yeah, for, for everyone at home, think about the person that you want to be. Decide that that is who you are now. So guys, uh, we're just going to wrap up there. So head up, thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you head over, check us out on Instagram and TikTok at the 5,000 week journey or just head over to our YouTube at the 5,000 week journey. As always, it is absolutely awesome to put together and share this uh, podcast with you guys and we look forward to seeing you for the next one see you later guys